Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. This morning, I am standing out in front of High Desert State Prison in Las Vegas, Nevada. You can see the, you can see the towers over there and stuff. And uh, that is where I spent uh, the last 11 years of my 30 years in prison. I spent at High Desert State Prison. And I thought, I thought that there'd be no better place. I've been wanting to do a video where I give my testimony in a concise manner. And I, I've done a bunch of them where I were, filmed it where I was in church giving my testimony. But I wanted to do one, uh, uh, just maybe a little bit more Reader's Digest version and just for the camera. So, uh, Father, we ask you to bless now and uh, uh, let, let everything said glorify you in Jesus' name. So, hey, I'm a Vegas guy. I'm from Vegas. My dad, actually, he was in the mafia. He worked for Meyer Lansky. He set up, he set up casinos all over the world. But he passed away when I was 10 years old. And uh, and I just kind of, my mom had to go back to work. And uh, <clears throat> I fell in with a rough crowd. And I started uh, doing drugs, uh, got involved in crime, and one thing led to another. I, I was in a uh, uh, youth prison reformatory three times. I turned 18, I got out, and I, I just kind of hit hit the outlaw trail. I was I, I'd already I'd already uh, uh, got my first adult felonies. I was on the run from the law, and uh, so I was just traveling around the country, uh, hooked up with some outlaw bikers, uh, just you know robbing, stealing, doing dope, shooting dope. And I, I, I ended up right around my 21st birthday uh, hanging out with a bunch of outlaw bikers in South Texas uh, on, the Rio, on the Rio Grande River. We were running guns and dope across, across the river down there, messing with a, a bunch of a, a Mexican cartel drug dealers. And um, I never, I'd never been to church. In my upbringing, with my dad being in the casino business and stuff, I'd never heard about Jesus. I, ne I, I, I kind of, I thought I, I used to tell people I was an atheist. I, I just didn't believe any of that stuff. I, I thought Jesus was like Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. But as I was approaching my 21st birthday down there in South Texas, um, I began to do some soul searching, and uh, I was like, man. Is this it? Is this this miss my life? I'm uh, I'm twenty turning twenty one years old, and I I'm just old drug addict, a criminal on the run. Is that is this is this where Roy Bell's life ends up? And I can remember sitting out uh, uh, on the porch there of the little apartment uh, we were all in, and just kind of looking up to the sky. I was like, man, if there's anybody out there, man, I'm I need something. I I need a I need a sign. I. I need some answers. I mean, I, I just, I remember having that little moment out there on that patio. And, uh, you know, anybody that's sincerely seeking after God, I believe God in his word has obligated himself to reveal him to him. And, uh, and, that, and that's what happened. So uh, these outlaw bikers that I was with, uh, uh, they were second generation of the peacemakers out of Toledo, Ohio. Uh, they're, 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 their parents had been the original uh, uh, peacemakers, and, and uh, they started talking about one of the OGs, <laughs> the original gangsters, one of the original peacemakers that had run with their dad, and they talked about he was coming down. Big Dave Brake. Boy, they start telling Big Dave Brake stories, man. They they had him uh, Batman, Superman, King Kong, uh, uh, all put <laughs> all put together, right? Uh, talk about you know. You know, he whooped this whole gang. He kicked in the bar door and came in with a sh that boy. Ba Dave Brake was where they made him to be a very impressive guy. So we're all waiting on big Dave Brake. Dave Brake shows up. He pulls up on his bike and he came up the stairs. <clears throat> and the very first time I looked into Dave Brake's face, I knew that whatever this man had was what I'd been looking for my whole life. This man had whatever it was that I was missing in me. I just knew it. I knew it. And so I considered myself somewhat of a, of a, of a slick character and a knowing people. And so, man, I was laser focused in on this guy, Big Dave Brake. 
Big guy, too. Big guy. Uh, came, pulled up on a Moto Guzzi 850 Eldorado. Amen. And uh, came up the apartment and he sat down. And I'm, I'm just looking. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to get this guy's number. I'm trying to figure him out. What do you got? What's your secret? What is it? And Big Day Break, unbeknownst to everybody else, he'd gotten saved. He'd become a preacher. He was a Christian biker. And Big Day Break came down there. Okay, sat down on that on that couch, and he began to tell everybody about the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know the Bible says the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And I can remember the very verse, <clears throat> the very verse that, that Dave quoted that pierced that sword that pierced the darkness of my soul and let the light of God's word in. He said, look it, I just want to know him and the power of his resurrection. And that pierced my heart, and the light came in, and God showed himself to me, and I was like, what? I thought Jesus in the Bible was like Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy. I was like, what? Jesus in the Bible? <laughs> Jesus in the Bible? Jesus is real. The Bible is true. This is, this is real. This is true. And while I was wonderfully and gloriously saved, I, I, received the, I received the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. His spirit came into me. Man, by the, like, like the hand of God reached in and flipped a light switch and the lights came on. Man, I was saved. I was so wonderfully and gloriously saved. And I got excited for God. And uh, I started going. I just, I just walked down there. I went to a little Southern Baptist church there in Mission, Texas. And I got baptized. And I just started hanging around the church. Of where I was at, the apartment I was at was full of bikers and, and Mexican drug dealers and dope and all. And I, I just get up and I just walk and I just hang around that church. And this church had a teenage boy that they had sent to a Christian boys' home that was affiliated with the Lester Roloff boys' homes. It was the, uh, uh, they had the Shepherd's Lane and the Redemption Ranch with. Brother Bob Wills. And they had sent this boy named John Orcott. They had sent him off to Shepherd Lane's boy's home. And Brother Wills was at the Redemption Ranch. And so what happened was the director of the Shepherd Lane's boy's home had a little boy. That little boy was out on a frozen pond and he fell through the ice. This boy, John Orcott from the church, ran out, dived in, got the little boy up, Got him out of the ice, but John Orcott slipped back under, and, and, and he died. So they brought his body with four boys from the Redemption Ranch Boys Home for the funeral at that little church. I'd been, I hadn't been saved up two weeks. And they sitting in that little church, and they brought, they brought John Orcott's body there for the funeral. And Brother Bob Wills preached the funeral. And those four boys from the boys' home, they got up and they gave their testimony of Jesus Christ. And listen, yeah, I'd been to reform school. I'd been to youth prison. I'd seen that it didn't work. But I saw this shining testimony of these young men. And I said, man, man, man. When that service was over, I went to Brother Bob Wills. And I said, can I go with you? Man, look, I still had hair out to here. I hadn't been saved two weeks. I'd never been to try. I didn't know anything. But Brother Wills could see my sincerity. And Brother Wills said, well, what are you saying, uh, uh, Roy? Uh, um, you want to be a missionary? I said, yeah, that's it. I want to be a missionary. He said, well, we're leaving in the morning. I said, I'll be ready. So in the morning, I got in, I got in the van with Brother Wills and Miss Wills and those four boys and we headed off to the Redemption Ranch right outside of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And on the way, we stopped in Corpus Christi, Texas at the People's Church, Lester Roloff's. <laughs> we slept on Lester Roloff's living room floor that night. And in the morning, Lester Roloff himself got up, came out, fixed us breakfast, and he looked over at me and he asked Brother Wills, he said, Brother Wills, who is that? <laughs> Brother Will says, well, that's Brother Roy. He's going to be a missionary. <laughs> Brother, Brother Roloff said, go and get him a haircut, ain't you? He don't look like one of our boys. But then I went to the Redemption Ranch, and I spent, 
spent about six months there at the Redemption Ranch. And I tell you, it was a spiritual greenhouse. I was in the program with the boys, chapel every day, scripture memory. I mean, I'd never opened the Bible in my life, but I was just soaking it up like a sponge. And every, every church service, we'd take the bus into town to Central Baptist Church in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and they had a little Bible college. So after six months working with the boys home, I moved into town. I started going to Bible college. And from there, I, I actually, I fell in love with the girl that was there in the Bible college. And she went on to Hiles Anderson College. And uh, I followed her to Hiles Anderson College. And the, it, it, it didn't turn out good. Uh, uh, her, you know, her parents didn't, didn't like my history. And uh, uh, I had a problem with, I was still a little rough around the edges. I hadn't been saved but a minute. And I had a problem with, with my uh, a dorm room uh, roommate. And I hit him in the mouth. And it, it, so I got mad at God. Uh, I, I, I was heartbroken for losing the girl. And then, and so this is where it went bad. I tried to take it back. I said, I, I don't know what happened. I got brainwashed. But listen, you can't run from somebody that lives inside of you. And I tried to run from God. And that's where my run started right there. And that ran, that run, it was up and down. There was, there were times during the years where I'd try to come back to the Lord for a while and it might work for a while, I'd fall off again. The drugs were always my problem. But it was up and down, in and out. And you can't run from God. God, two things a born-again child of God can't do. Number one, he can't go to hell. And number two, he cannot be successful and prosper in his sin because once you're God's child, the new dynamic, the new paradigm of conviction and chastisement enter in. And God convict me and chastise me, but I was stubborn and I was hard headed and I kept running and I'd go into prison and I'd get out of prison and I'd go back to prison. And I went to I went to prison four times. I did a total of 30 years of my life in prison. I had over 12 felony convictions, mostly armed robberies. I had two habitual criminal enhancements and two prison escapes. Finally, at 50 years old, I went the last time. I had a life sentence. They gave me a 10 to life at 50 years old. And they sent me right here. High Desert State Prison. And listen, when you're 50 years old, you got a 10 to life. That means in 10 years, you're going to see a parole board. But look, when you've been to prison four times, you've got 12 felony conviction armed robberies. You've escaped twice and got two habitual criminal enhancements. You don't make a parole board. You go in there, we'll see you in five years. We'll see you in another five years. You know, you don't get a parole board. So I said, well, that's it. I'm going to spend the rest of my life right here at High Desert State Prison. And that's when God really got a hold of me. And I, I tapped out. I, I'm done. I, I didn't want the dope anymore. He just kind of kind of just took it from me, I, the liking of the desire for it. Ugh. I was like, I don't want it anymore. I'm done. I said, I, 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 if I'm going to be here for the rest of my life, I just want the peace of God back. I just want my relation, my, not my relation, my fellowship. I never lost my relationship. He was always my father, but I was running like the prodigal. And, but I wanted my fellowship. I wanted that sweet communion. I wanted my peace. I wanted my joy. And so I started going back to the chapel right here, at High Desert State Prison. And make a long story short, I ended up being the chaplain's assistant, being assigned to the chapel. And I spent my last 10 years here preaching, teaching, and pastoring the Christian church inside High Desert State Prison, 4,000 4, man facility. So the last, my last decade here, my job every day was to go to the chapel and preach and teach the Word of God and hold church services. I never thought I was getting out, and that was okay, because uh, I was in the center of God's will, doing what God called me to do, and I had joy, and I was good, I was happy. I, 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 I had no, I figured I was gonna be here the rest of my life, and that was okay. Then COVID, then COVID hit, and these officers, <laughs> they, they quit coming to work. The, this place started falling apart. And so they're like, man, anybody that we can possibly let go, we need to let go. 
and I was just coming on that 10 years on my 10 to life. And I went on my very first parole board on my 10 to life. And they let me go. <laughs> they let me go. That was a miracle. And uh, that was two and a half years ago that I got out of here. And and y'all, y'all that watch my YouTube channel, you know what 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 God has done in these last two and a half years. I have preached over 70 times in 24 churches in 13 states. I have this wonderful YouTube channel that uh, uh, the, the, my videos just in the last year have been watched 150,000 times. I, I have over over 10,000 subscribers now and, and did an old jailbird from a slammer that was just given up on. There was no hope. We were locked away. A, a, a serial backslider. Nobody thought God would ever do anything with me. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that the, that the Lord can do anything. I, I just got told not to make videos here. All right. 